when I started playing this game, they had something called Super Strike Cards, which are still a thing in the game, but we have we haven't had a Super Strike Card in I want to say a year and a half since the very last Super Strike Card came. I think the last one was actually the AGLTN. I believe he was the last one. Don't quote me, but I think he was the very last Super Strike card to come out. And ever since him coming out, like, almost two years ago, we've not had another Super Strike card. Now, something that blows my mind even further beyond that is that these cards currently are only SSRs, which obviously they have the level 100 cap. So they are URs, but they don't have a TR status, so they're not level 120 cap. I don't know why Bandai refuses to awaken the Super Strike card because they're actually quite interesting. I mean, they don't hit hard, but I mean, they have attack passive, they have key support passives, they lower attack. I mean, they have potential to be pretty cool if you awaken them. They're not going to be game breaking, but it's like, what are you doing, Bandai? What are you actually drinking? You want to invite the boy over? I want to drink. I want to get drunk, Bandai, like, diffk, diffk, diffk. What is Bandai doing with these Super Strike cards? Because none of them have a TUR style. They refuse to doke and awaken these cards even further beyond. Why? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows, but I decided to pick the top five most, I think, um, not meta-breaking, but most relevant awakenings if these cards were to ever awaken. Uh, which, bro, like, what you doing, Bandai, like, awaken these cards into TURs, which, that would be great. You have new players who come to the game who can actually grind very relevant TUR characters that are very viable and helpful. These cards, upon awakening, wouldn't be anything groundbreaking, but at least they're somewhat obtainable, um, and, you know, still, you know, it's free-to-play, obviously, more free-to-play stuff, the better. Uh, they've been in the game for a minute, and they can awaken even further beyond. You're not doing it, Bandai. Anyway, so number five for me out of my top five list of Super Strike cards that I feel should 100% awaken. And if they do, they will become an absolute beast. Starting off with the Android 16. Now, the Intelligence Android 16, you can actually farm. He right now is pretty damn decent. He has a very uh, interesting passive. And using him in certain scenarios, like once again, Super Battle Road, he can be very helpful. Links, his uh, links are dead. His leader ability is dead. His super attack, whatever, it's all dead. His only benefit and relevancy is his passive. Damage reduced minus 55% when guard is activated. That is pretty good in certain scenarios because obviously guard has to be active. Guard is only active against super effective typing. So, for example, he's intelligence. He's strong against tech units. So... Obviously, you know, you need to go up against tech cards. Um, is it tech? Am I, am I drunk? Yeah, it's the, yeah. I, I'm forgetting what the, what the typings are. Yes. And it's strong against tech. So this card needs to be against tech to obviously activate the passive. But let's say if he were to awaken. Now, leader ability probably will go up to 3k and 40% stats. Like, very free-to-play leader ability. Uh, he might pick up extreme damage. He might pick up supreme it really doesn't matter. Like, he's here to tank. He's here to be a defensive offense, well, defensive unit. So, I would actually leave the damage reduced minus 50% alone and just take off when guard is active. So, maybe give him an unconditional 30% attack and defense and give him the damage reduced minus 55% unconditional. Yeah, he's going to be probably the, well, one of the best tanks in the game. Actually, Maybe, uh, will he be the best tank in the game? I don't even know, but he'll be very, very viable. Even with a dead link set, he'll still be used on extreme int team and on, on the Android team. He'll be very, very viable because he can tank any amount of damage in the game for 55%. Now, that's not dumb. That's not insane. That's not meta breaking, but it's very, very good. It's a wonderful free to play card that free to play players can grind in the game upon starting, and they can have this card that can block. Any damage in the game, which is going to help with, you know, uh, Doken Fest events, collecting medals. Uh, it's going to help with the farming of certain events, like uh, certain story missions. It'll be very helpful, but no. He doesn't awaken. Moving on to my number four, which is the number fourth card that if they do awaken, he'll have a very big impact on his team. The Trunks Team STR from the future. This card, when he first came out, actually was a staple on my main team because his pass is pretty good. Uh, once again, leaderability is important. Super attack is important. 
passive for this card is pretty interesting it can go even further beyond and make him very very viable attack and defense plus 50 percent ah sorry a bit of a yawn kind of sneeze thing there passive attack and defense plus 15 percent for all allies yes he's an attack and defense all ally support very very good but it's only 15 percent it's only 15 percent well if he were to awaken even further beyond you know give him maybe two key and 20 percent attack and defense to all allies that's not insane as shit i mean it's really really good but it's not busted to the point where oh we can't let a free-to-play card have that passive we have free-to-play cards like for example um uh, what is it i think it's the um uh, it's the kami they get from the dragon ball saga banner he has a two key and 20 percent attack and defense passive yeah i mean you summon for him from tickets but i mean like it's not like he's that difficult to acquire i mean if you've been playing since the inception of the game you probably pull at least one copy of him so he's very very easy to awaken by the way having this card has the same passive what do you mean the same? You just have a free to play, well, a freer to play alternative of that same car with a better passive. Now, this guy, Link set, like all these cards have kind of wonky links. Like, you know, this guy, his links are okay, like Saiyan, Futuresque type of Trunks, Vegeta links, which is, you know, it can be useful in certain teams. Uh, he does fit it on Hybrid Saiyans and Future Saga. Um, Super Time Cannon, you can probably give him a 20% attack raising for allies for one turn. That's not dumb, it's not insane, it's not horrible, it's pretty okay. Uh, lead ability, 3 key, 40% stats. I mean, just give all these characters 3 key, 40% stats. If you want to go above, maybe 3 key, 50% stats for Super STR, I'll take it. Uh, that means, obviously, you give the further increasing of stats, but it's more niche. So, I'll take that. But, Awaken this card, 2 key, 20% attack and defense across the board. He doesn't need his own attack and defense passive. He just needs to support, and he'll be pretty damn viable. So, Make it a thing, Bandai. Stop cucking the boy. Anyways, moving on number three. Number three for me would have to be... Uh, wait, do I have a number one option? I don't have a number one. Wait. So we have one, two, three. Oh, I didn't pick a number one. Uh, okay, we're going to we're gonna go along with this. So I'm actually going gonna to pick a number three right now. Live. We are not going to stop the video. I'm going to pick a card right now at random because I want to. Anyway, so I actually picked number three right now. Uh, looking at the options that we have so okay starting over all right sorry. all right so number three for me is going to be the go tanks fail b now go tanks fail b i just like these cards i like go tanks fail b because i mean i like the character um it's like a an adl version of go tanks which is uh, pretty interesting to me now he's a nuker I love nukers. I'm a big fan of nukers because they're fun to use. I love the fact that you have to collect orbs to get their attack up. The more orbs you collect, the better. Now, this guy, he gets 5% attack and defense per key obtained. So, that's any key sphere. It can be tech, AGL, whatever. That already is pretty good, but it's such a low amount, 5%. Like, 5% Bandai, like, really? Just 5% really? Like, come on, man. He does have the recover HP with candy. That only works on Kid Boost stages. Like, it's not going to work anywhere else. So, that is pretty much irrelevant. But if they were to add to that, they need to bump that up to, I would say, 10%. Along with giving him an unconditional 50% attack and defense. I know that's 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 kind of out there. A free-to-play card. But right now, he is he's not usable at all. Even with Awakening, with that kind of buff... I mean, it's not like he's going to be like, oh my god, like, the best nuker in the game. Like, no, he's good, but, like, we have you, we have units in the game who has Unconditional 100% attack up, plus gives himself 15% attack per orb obtained, bro. Like, it's not, like, dumb as shit. It's not, like, it's not, like, drunk busted. It's, it's okay, but there's better cards, but I feel like that's good enough to where people would use him. 10% attack and defense per any okay all right all right how about this how about this if you don't want to give him the unconditional attack and defense how about this all right this is what we're gonna do we're gonna give him 15 percent attack and defense per tech sphere obtained so he needs to get specific tech orbs to get 15 percent attack and defense in addition if he gets any additional orbs of any additional typing um, which is obviously rainbow orbs, he'll get the additional 10% attack up because you're not going to be able to get like tech and int orbs on the same map. 
because you, you can only burst one typing of a bubble. Um, but if you were to give him, let's say, a tech portion of the um, a tech portion of his passive to where he gets more attack on defense collecting tech orbs, then that'll give you an incentive to get more tech orbs. But if you have no tech orbs on the map, at least he'll get 10% per any other key sphere. If you happen to get tech on rainbow orbs, then his attack and defense will go through the roof, which would be pretty awesome. So that's a very cool way to keep him as a nuker if you don't want to give him the unconditional 50% attack and defense. That's fine. Uh, give him supreme damage. Maybe raise attack for one turn so you can hit a little harder. Uh, four percent stats and obviously three key for tech units. If you want to go even further beyond super tech, three key, fifty percent stats. It's not insane. It's not like dumb, but it's fun. It's actually interesting. I'll use him. I would actually meta him. I would put him on a hybrid same team and have fun because that's an interesting character. But no, they don't awaken Bandai. God damn you, Bandai. Anyway, so moving on to my number two option, which is going to be the AGL. Vegeta that's about to launch Galaga Gun at Goku and they have the Kamehameha and Galaga Gun Clash Which is you know the same arc obviously like the very first arc in Dragon Ball Z that Vegeta Love this form of Vegeta very very fun very very interesting obviously he's a villain at this point But right now uh, leader ability you know three key to age on tech types and eh. uh, super attack huge damage and eh. uh, Passive 40% attack when key is six or more now That is interesting upon awakening it could give him 80% attack up when key six and more like that's that's not busted bro like that's actually that's probably the least i mean okay it's damage but 80 percent attack up when key six and more like we have cars in this game bro who casually have like 120 as an ssr like that's not insane like if you want to make him insane give him 100 percent attack up when key six and more i feel that's insane that's for a free-to-play car that's 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 pretty busted but I'll, I'll keep it moderate, bro. 80% attack up. So we double his attack instead of 40, give him 80. Uh, make him, maybe give him like a defensive buff of 40%. Like he doesn't have to have 80% attack and defense, but maybe give him some kind of defensive viability. 40% uh, defense, only 80% attack when key six or more. I mean, I feel that's appropriate. I feel that's pretty okay for the card. Uh, take off huge damage, give him supreme damage. Maybe have him raise attack for three turns. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like allow him to hit a little harder. You know, that's pretty cool. Uh, these cards don't have relevant links like shocking speed and prepare for battle, unfortunately. So, links are always going to be kind of meh, but perhaps maybe awaken them with fierce battle medals so they can have fierce battle. That would be pretty awesome. If not, then Sharon Limits is fine because we have a lot of good Sharon Limits cards that are very relevant. But this card, you have potential, but you know, other cards support nuke. I do like those things a bit better than having unconditional attack. But if they were to go that route, I would not be mad. And it would be pretty good improvements for him. Uh, Supreme Diamond with 80% attack up. You know, he's going to hit okay. Um, at Rainbow Star, he's gonna be okay. You know, I'll take it. It's not groundbreaking. It's not busted. It's not stupid as shit. Uh, it's just okay, which all the cars are pretty okay to good. So, my number one pick for the number one most interesting and improved car, if they were to awaken him, is actually going to be the AGL Kid Vegeta. Now, I love that he's a kid, first of all. I love it. And it's Vegeta. I'm a big fan of Vegeta. Uh, leader ability, 3 key, 30% HP and attack. Now, obviously, awakening him, 3 key. 40% to all stats, or if you want to go even further beyond, um, extreme AGL, three key, and 50% stats to all, you know, 50% stats, you know, HP, attack, and defense, pretty cool. He does Supreme, well, he does stream down right now, awaken him to Supreme, and have him perhaps greatly raise attack and defense for one turn, like, yeah, that's very, very good for a free-to-play card, but, I mean, it'll, bro, it's pretty fun, I'm just saying, Right now, his passive is 50% uh, attack when launching a super. I would say give him 100% when launching a super. That's all he needs. He doesn't need defense. He doesn't need uh, any kind of healing, nothing. Give Make, make, make him hit hard, Brandon. Like, make him hit hard. 100% attack up when launching a super. Also, if you don't want to do the greatly raising attack and defense, just make him greatly raise attack. That's all you do, which is a 50% increase, which is he's going to hit good. That's, that's good damage, bro. Like, that's really, really good damage. But, you know, he's a free-to-play card. And, and he doesn't awaken Bandai. But if they were to awaken him, that's what I would want to see. He would be, you know, probably the hardest-hitting... Eh, the hardest-hitting free-to-play card. Eh. He's going to be one of the hardest-hitting free-to-play cards with not an LR in the game. Uh, he would do very appropriate damage. He would be very fun to use. Uh, and he's completely free-to-play. And he feels on pure Saiyans. And he's a Vegeta card. So obviously he has Vegeta link sets like you know prodigies and 
uh, royal lineage, the same lineage. So he'll link up relatively well with the Vegeta cards. And I don't feel that's like busted as hell. Uh, that makes him very fun and viable, but he's not like, oh my god, like I'm gonna run him over a Doken Fest card. I'm gonna run him over a Sunnable SSR. Like I'm not gonna run him over nothing else. Like he's he's a fun free to play card, but bruh, like he's not like insane as shit. Like he's not like drunk. He's kind of drunk, but not like insanely drunk. So like he's had like two shots, but not like four. You know what I mean? So Bandai, please awaken the goddamn Super Strike cards, Bandai. Like what you doing? Like, what are you doing, Bandai? So, anyways, guys, very quick rant, man. Like, rant kind of thing. I don't know, man. But, anyway, so that's what I would do with these cards. They would awaken them. Obviously, we have the other Super Strike cards to awaken. But I want to go into, like, a 40-minute video awakening all these cards and seeing what their passes would be. So, I just I decided, I decided to, uh, to pick the top five to uh, listen to this video here. And that's what I did. So, let me know your top five is down below. If these cards were to awaken, what would their passive improvements be? What would you want to see? Who do you want to awaken? Like, we have the... Uh, King Cole and Frieza, you know, Mecha Frieza combo. There are other options of cards that could awaken as well, besides the ones that I picked. But if you would have your choice, who would you pick, guys? Who would you pick? So, anyways, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, share, comment down below, and subscribe, many things. So, to the boy, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.